All right, so that uh, effect we'll be achieving today. So let's dive into it, guys. Head first, obviously. All right, so I've created a very empty project and I have already imported those two tiles we have created in the previous episode. First thing we want to do after importing those PNG uh, images is we want to change the texture type to Sprite 2D and UI and then hit apply so that so that the background which is transparent will be deleted. Mm, another thing is we want to change the filter mode to point no filter so that the pixel art will stay crispy sharp otherwise there will be applied some kind of anti-aliasing filter which we don't want to to happen so we can also change to high quality and then hit apply for both remember to do it for both and then as you can see we have crispy quality all right so we'll create an empty game object we'll call it game manager and here we add a new script and this new script we'll call world generator world generator we open the script, wait for Visual Studio to, to load it. All right, but before we begin, let's create a generic object which will serve as a tile. We go to the scene, we change to 2D view. Also the camera will make it solid color and background will be a light gray. We'll change the perspective to orthographic right right now we go to our sprite we'll change the, the name to tile and as a sprite we'll choose our tile obviously right but we have it here we drag and drop this object into our project window to create a prefab of this tile all right now we go back to our word generator here first of all we want to uh, create a variable public game object call it tile object here we'll assign our tile prefab obviously in the start method we want to call a method we'll label as generate world we don't have this method so we'll have to create it all right let's create two variables width and height which will define how big our tileboard is here in generate world we want to create uh, the tileboard which is 10 pieces wide and 10 pieces high and we will call a nested loop so we'll call one four we'll loop for width and the other will be for here called J and height all right right now what we want to do is we instantiate and we instantiate our tile object and we can also pass the position as you can see position quaternion so we go with new vector three and he will pass i j and zero then we'll go with this dot quaternion transform all right one more thing our tile our tiles are 16 pixels wide and long so we need to change the pixels per unit to 16 all right we run the script again and perfect we have created our
Perfect. We have created our tile board. But something's wrong, isn't it? Of course it is. We have isometric tiles and right now the way we are spawning our tiles is good for normal front view of the tile. So we need to change our coordination system when it comes to instantiating the tiles. As a matter of fact, it's not that difficult. As a matter of fact, it's not that difficult. Let's draw a small board, which will sell, serve as an example. Okay, so we've got a board three by three. Right now, what we what we did was spawn tiles like this, right? And how to change from this? To that yeah that, that's the that's the question we will answer in a moment so first of all we need to specify the labeling of the position and the indexes of our tiles all right so here we'll have columns and here will have rows. When we label or index this piece 1-1, one, one, it will be this piece, correct? This piece will be also column 1, but row will be 2, and it will go here, correct? Because the relation of the pieces will stay the same, so it will be one down and one down in this perspective will be this then another one down so another column will be here so as a matter of fact our column so let's call it c1 will be here so it's c1 c2 c3 c2 c3 the same with rows row one row two and row three row 3 will be here, row 1, row 2, row 3. Look, this piece has index 3-3, three, three, but the position in the game world is on the x-axis the same, as the one one but on the y-axis it goes down there are several calculations we need to do in order to get the equation that will help us determine what's the position in the world view of our isometric tile I will not bore you with the mathematics so I will just give you the solution and the solution where C stands for the column index and R stands for row index and it doesn't really matter whether we start uh, counting at 1 1 or 0 0 obviously we'll start at 0 0 when it comes to indexes in the arrays in the game itself all right so let's back to our script so uh, for it to be easier let's create a uh, let's create two more variables x and we'll put the new discovered formula so times i minus 0 0.5 f times j and we'll duplicate it uh, sorry it's not int it's obviously float float here as well minus uh, 0 0.25 and here 0 0.25 as well and we'll pass x and y right so far so far so good one more thing we'll change the name of the tile so we need to 
we need to grab this reference of this object and we'll change the name to tile plus i plus space plus j so that we know which tile is which one according to our index and when we run our project again we can see that indeed we have received what we wanted to do and also all the tiles are labeled according to index of our choosing yep so we've got our tile and as a matter of fact as per default our sprites are sorted correctly so that we have no visible artifacts yes all right one more thing we'll change uh, the bit specs of the camera and we run the code again and as you can see we've got a pretty nice view of our tile board in the next video we'll code uh, the reaction of every tile whenever we enter and hover our mouse over it okay guys thank you for watching and see you in the next video